would like to, hello everybody, first of all, I would like to introduce to you uh, Dr. Marie Popan. Uh, Dr. Marie Popan uh, holds, holds a doctorate degree in Latin linguistics uh, on world order in Latin, the Iperbaton. He got uh, his uh, uh, doctoral degree at the Université Jean Jaurès in uh, Toulouse, the former Université Toulouse Le Mirail. Um, he is a researcher in the history of Transylvania in the 18th century and in Latin sources at the Complexo Musea Distrita Nazar. I'm not sure how to yeah. pronounce well, but yeah, this is the idea. Um, he, he is a fluent Latin uh, speaker, and he is extremely active in spoken Latin forums in the internet. And this is how we met, and taking advantage of uh, his visit to the to Jerusalem, uh, I'm very, very happy to um, welcome him at the Police Institute. He's going to talk about a specific subject, the length of the final and penultimate vowels in Latin grammarians, some reflections on the Latin word order and its prosody. Let us welcome uh, Dr. Kota. I'm uh, thanking uh, to Professor Bristol Bicot for uh, uh, his commitment uh, and for uh, the Institute uh, Police uh, from Jerusalem to invite me to have this opportunity to present uh, my latest research concerning uh, the uh, length of vowels and uh, the interaction between the, the phonetic in Latin and the word order. Uh, this interaction uh, uh, was not constant for me uh, for uh, uh, my first uh, years of Latin research. Uh, after researching my uh, thesis uh, about the world in Latin, I, I felt that something uh, was not present in my, in my researches. Uh, because only uh, from semantic point of view or from the text strategy, uh, uh, I could uh, demonstrate that there are some structures of hyperbaton and, uh, and hyperbata in Latin. <clears throat> so, uh, two years after my doctorate, I had the interest to renew, in a sense, uh, my knowledge about the phonetic, but historic phonetic uh, only, because I'm not a classical phonetician for Latin. I'm, I'm uh, researching. Uh, especially how the uh, Latin grammarians have uh, described uh, uh, the ways and the rules to pronounce better classical Latin. Uh, linguistics had uh, its main goal to describe very scientifically what uh, the language has in peculiarities and its rules. And uh, uh, that is why uh, in the phonetic, uh, in the history of phonetics, uh, linguistic can contribute to a better description of uh, the lengths of vowels uh, uh, in the Latin language. Uh, and this would have and will have uh, uh, many uh, positive uh, influences on how the Latin language will be pronounced and how the Latin language will be described uh, and used uh, in didactic uh, purposes. So, uh, uh, I uh, describe uh, uh, in a few words uh, the content of my uh, presentation, of my lecture. So, the first, uh, the first part will be given to sonoritas and barbaris, accentus and tonus, the place of phonetic artness within activitas. The second part will be a distinction between graphemic and phonetic language, literae and elementa in Christian. The length of the related penultimate, penultimate and final vowels in the Omedes and Christian and Pompeius. On uh, the allophones of the 
E for name, I in English, E for name, in Latin, in Consentium Grammarium. And uh, to the end of my presentation, uh, I will uh, give some reflection on the subordination of word order to the prosodic level in Latin. I will read my text and uh, 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 in time I also use uh, the benefit slides, the uh, PowerPoint slides. In Laconic form as Proemium introduction, the grammar, the grammar chapters of the Latin grammarians are preceded by the rules of the correct pronunciation of vowels and consonants. Parcimonia and Brevitas, the concise style, were commonly used with exceptional precision, not infrequently this need for the concise style, however, led to overlooking the various nuances of pronunciation that cannot be set aside. Reading the base of Latin grammarians, one can come across linguistic realities that can confuse one. Why, in fact, the concise formulation of rules, brevitas, meant in the terminology of the Latin grammarians, Pompeius defined it as a necessity, a kind of stylistic excellence for the, for the Latin grammar teacher. Its aim was not only the brevity of sentences, but rather the clarity of their explanations based on the duality, the rules come first and the example later, the example being the proof of the proposed rule. In the most cases, the writing of Roman grammarians were paid for and commissioned by various clients and patrons. The, uh, the size of their pages was usually small in order to achieve a concise style. A concise style that provides clarity in explanation that provokes, as a side effect, the loss of important phonetic details of Latin. The good side of things is that, that although the concise style obviously led to the loss of some phonetic details, it fortunately happened that those omitted by some were recorded by others. Linguistic understood as a form of neutral and rigorous description language can achieve the rescue of these details, disparately recorded by various authors, by extensively researching the corpus of Latin Grammarians and bringing it together into a unified descriptive whole. What some have omitted, we find recorded in others, so in others, so that the goal of a convincing response of language can become a realistic and attainable goal. The cultural world of Roman antiquity manifested itself under the stringency of performance and aesthetic example, and language was part of these set of requirements. If the correctness of language, Latinitas, concerned the correctness of language as a whole, phonetic correctness was ensured only by the exclusion of rap error at the word level, barbarism, barbarism. The harmony of language achieved through the use of tropes, specifics to the art of the literary creation, in short, access to sonoritas, euphonia, and cochinitas. The omission of important facts of phonetic peculiarities automatically leads to phonetic barbarism. The late Roman grammarian Pseudo Victorinus warns us that the smallest and most insignificant error in the pronunciation of the Latin word leads to the state of barbarism in the pronounced word. Only a few L. That is sufficient for the barbarism. So, barbarism per, per, per accentus. I, I will read a little in Latin, but very uh, quickly, and then uh, the English translation. Barbarism per accentus. Uh, ut cum aut accentus pro gravi, pro gravis pro acuto, ver alius pro poni ver ponitur, ut sidicas metelus acuta prima silaba, metelus, aut cum in secunda si acutus accentus, in prima gravis. Barbarismus nullo modo excusare potes. Barbarismus nullo modo excusare potes. Si a nobis per indulgentia tia visium est, si a poetis per oratori, oratoribus virtus locutionis et appellatum recer metaplasmos. So in, in uh, Latin, a uh, uh, version of my translation would be barbarous in accent when the acute action, acute action is used instead of great accent 
or the wave accent is takes the place of a tooth accent, or in particular accent is used for our accents, such as someone who pronounced Medellus with an active accent on the first syllable, since the active action is on the second syllable, as Metellus, when in fact the action on the first syllable is great, Metellus. The barbarism cannot be omitted in any way when a barbarism is committed by us. Of carelessness is a vice. When the barbarism is used by poets and orators, it is a virtue of language called in Greek metaplasmos. The sonoritas and the euphony is the highest level of the phonetic culture in the Latin language, which relates above the phonetic latinitas, which is the phonetic part of the countries in the language. Sonoritas is rich, is rich at the final form of the written text after the applying this grammatical phonetic latinitas, after the intervention of the writer in the order of words of this text. So, uh, the phonetical latinitas is under sonoritas. Sonoritas is at the uh, is above, is, is the upper level. And after the interpretation of the writer, as I said, the order of this text, uh, where phonetic knowledge is almost non existent, Latin is perceived by the student as a graphic language, where efforts were mainly focused on translation, understanding, and morphology and complex phrases of the language. Graphic language may be an encoded and incomplete form of knowledge of Latin, but it still provides access to communication and passive reading to Latin text. So it's possible that someone, uh, for example, uh, wants to control the language without good phonetic rules, and that is the, uh, the stage of, of a kind of graphic language, a language, a language without phonetic artifacts. Which is possible, which is possible, but is not uh, uh, a wish for us. It's better to, to control the language from the first time, from the phonetic point of view. In, if in morphological or syntactic knowledge one starts from the rudiments of knowledge to more complex contents, from the simple to the complex, in the phonetics, the Latin grammarians orient the systematic knowledge in rules, arts in the opposite direction, from the end of the word to its beginning, from the last syllable to the penultimate, and further to the fringes syllable. The recent evidence from contemporary Latin sources of late antiquity especially from the writings of uh, Augustinus, uh, that the phenomenon of syllable equalization took place in North Africa, as evidenced by the fact that the theater drawers from Cartagena could not distinguish between long and short syllables. It is not excluded that this phenomenon of sy uh, sy sy syllable equalization, other said uh, syllable, uh, uh, yes, syllable equalizations, uh, occurred later than in our European provinces of the Roman Empire. Since syllables, uh, syllable equalization is a historical fact, a deductive need arose to formulate an effective and accessible, accessible strategy for learning syllable length. So that is uh, the good state of things, because we have enough writings to describe the length of syllables. In this work, uh, uh, incorrect understanding of syllable length leads to situations where homonyms occur and where it is impossible to rely or establish the accent of words. But how can, but how to learn which syllables are long and which are short, so that the number of rules does not become too large to remember? In this phonetic situation, phonetics resorts to the help of morphology, which defines the morphological status of each word whose syllables are analyzed according to their lens. In this work, Partitiones, which I read uh, in the last time, Christianus combined morphology with phonetics in describing a word in the sense that a given word 
must be examined to determine whether it is in genuine or positive a root word, or on the contrary, a derivative. If it is a derivative word, the root word in genuine must be determined, the length of its syllables must from the end to the beginning was calculated, and the basic accent was determined, the family of derivatives was formulated to determine the length and accent for each derivative. So, Barbar is understood as modification of the correct form within the limits of the legal word, or not the side of it, so not the side of the word. So, his barbarism has various occurrences recognized as such by Pseudo Victorinus and Posenius. It should be noted that the phenomenon of barbarism arising from the ignorance and understood as a vice of language, vicium, vicium pronounced uh, in Latin, has also an important phonetic side. Grammatically see, the phonetic barbarism take place, take place in the lengthening or shortening of duration of a syllable, as for example, a long syllable is articulated as short and vice versa. The mispronunciation of long and short vowels, such as the difference in sound between a long, a longa, and short a, as the ignorance of the difference of the letter e in pronunciation. Incorrect calculation of syllable length resulting in failure to place the accent, ignorance of the law, of the laws of accent, incorrect pronunciation of the seconds T, S, C, when enclosed by vowels. So uh, things argued by Posentius at various songs. Incorrect pronunciation of wickets L, M, N, F, R, indiscriminate pronunciation of mutes such as C, uh, Ka, Ga, Q, S, V, and semi-vowels. In this pronunciation of it is, as I said, non-use of a similar ifa at the end of the word or and or hiatus instead, ignorance of the rules of arsis and amphysis, arsis and thesis, without which not only that it's a accent itself, the Latin sentence of, or verse cannot be understood without the difficulty. It's very important to, to understand this because not only the good accent assures the understanding of the word, but a com combination between a good accent, the rules of arsis and thesis, and the good culture of pronouncing every syllable which is described as tenores. Every syllable of the word must be pronounced very, very carefully in order to assure a kind, a kind of such uh, kind of cardinalness of a Latin pronunciation, which is so, uh, uh, from my point of view, so interesting and, uh, and had a good sonority. In his chapter, uh, so, so was uh, uh, the features of the barbaries, which uh, are not, uh, uh, not few, but are many, many, many faces of barbaries. Uh, and but a good description of uh, the of the Latin politics could evitate uh, these uh, uh, features of barbaries, these characteristics of barbaries. Uh, in his chapter on politics, Christianus, the outstanding grammarians of the Latin language, a true Apollonius discourse of Latinity, clearly distinguishes between litera and elemental in the linguistic terminology gra grapheme and allophone. allophones. In this context, it is interesting to note that Christians presented the allophones, but not in the higher hierarchical higher, 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 higher unit of allophone, namely the phoneme, which is in fact an abstract construction, an abstract phonetic construct, and has the task of orienting the distribution of allophones. So, uh, elementa for Christians for, for A, for example, uh, uh, litera is, is the sign, and elementa are all the occurrences which, is, which appears in the pronunciation of A in, in the Latin language. So, uh, we consider it is meritorious that Christians assigned the accent and the syllable state to each other form. 
although he omitted the arsis and thesis for trisyllabic words. Arsis and thesis, arsis and thesis along with accent are indispensable of phonetic signifier. What this done as a didactic strategy of Brevitas. So, uh, element of this chapter. I'm uh, uh, also uh, reading Latin very, uh, uh, very short. So, digital figure literarum, quibus nos cutimur vigint tres, ipse vero pronunciaciones e al multo ampliores, quibia cum singule vocales denos immediantum sonos habentes vel plures, ut puta a litera brevis quattro tabet soni differentias cum habet aspirazione et et acuitur et gravatur, et ruxus cum, cum sin aspirazione acuitur et gravatur, ut habeo Habemus, abeo, abimus, both short. Long abeo e adem sex modis sona, cum habet aspirationem, et acuitur, bel gravatur, bel cici conflectitur, et rursus cum sin aspirationem, acuitur, bel gravatur, bel cici conflectitur. Ut hamis, hamorum, hamus, arae, araru, ara. Similiter alia vocales possum profeni. So the about uh, 23 forms of, of the letter we use, but their real pronunciation is much bigger since each vowel has one or more sounds, as for example, the short letter R has four different sounds when it has aspiration and is pronounced sharply or feebly, <coughs> and again when, when it is pronounced sharply or feebly without aspiration. So that we have habeo, habemus, Abeo abimus. The, sec, uh, the long A sound, on the other hand, has six variants when it has aspiration and it is sharpened or engraved or circumflex. And again, when it, when it is sharpened and or engraved or circumflex without aspiration, such as hamis, hamorum, hamus, are, aranum, ara. <coughs> Our vowels can also be pronounced in a similar way. So uh, for every for every vowel, there are ten forms of elementa, and uh, for every vowel, ten forms of elementa, in order to be controlled and understand and, and understood. According to the example of Christianus, the short R has the following elementa or other form. I I will uh, analyze. Uh, the example of Christianus now. According to the example of Christianus, the short R has the following element of elephants. Uh, the first uh, characteristic, short R with aspiration or without aspiration with the following fat, uh, features. The first example, habebo, habebo, with asis on ha, habebo, free, uh, free syllables, free syllabica, the word is an antidactyl and ha has aspiration and a sharp acutus accent according to the accent rule and carries the word accent as we would add, it, it is in arsis. Habemus. Habemus is an antibrach with underlined arsis, habe, habe, where the main accent on the syllable he is set, uh, set, be is circumflexed and the short ha that precedes, it is slightly greater because it preceded the accent syllable of the, of the word be. This long ha, in addition to the great accent, has a prosodic feature of a slight elevation because it is one syllable before the syllable in Nazis be. This example confers the statement of our Latin grammarians that in three syllabic words, the great accent coexists, coexists with circumflex accent in the penultimate position. That, that of what, uh, uh, in, in, in despite of the fact that, uh, I use a German word, uh, despite of the fact that uh, 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 
the second syllable uh, is circumflex, the first syllable uh, can also have uh, uh, a second accent. Uh, the rule is that uh, there is only one accent uh, in a Latin word, but in this case there are two accents which exist together. So, Abeo has the same feature as Habeo, with the difference that the first syllable has no aspiration. Ab Abibus is an antibrach, epibrach with the syllable sequence Abi in Asis, where the great accent in A coexists with the circumflex word Pri. The second main, main features, round up with aspiration and without aspiration, with the following features. Hamis is a spondy with, with Asis on Ha. Hamis is a spondy in which the short syllable Ha is in Asis with a sharp accent and the syllable Mis is in the tesis in the dative plural and thus long. Hamo is a palimbachus with the sec with a sequence in Asis, Hamo, where Ha is in great accent, coexists with Mo in a circumflex accent, which is the main word accent. According to the three syllable rules, the great accent on the principal syllable Ha coexists with the circumflex accent on the syllable Mo. Hamus, Hamus is a tohi uh, in which the aspirated long syllable Ha also carries the accent of the circumflex word and is in Asis. With this example is can be uh, uh, good uh, in a facile way understood. Are is a small d, but because the final syllable rai is long, the accent for the a syllable becomes sharp according to those have accent and easy passes. Aradu is a palimbachus in which the syllable the sequence ara is in arsis and the syllable a is very well aspiration and coexist with ra which is pronounced circumflexively and carries the accent of the word. Ara has the same characteristic as Hamus, except that the first syllable is an unaspirated A. If the letter A theoretically has ten pronunciations, each of the remaining vowels, A, E, O, U, must have ten each, so forty more elephants are required. We believe that Christianus surprisingly refrained from stringing together further examples of more than just the letter A, so that his successors did not attempt to determine these other vowels on the basis of examples. Is it possible that Christianus believed that the other pronunciations for the remaining vowels should be determined on the basis of similarity? We believe that the great Romanian committed a brevitas imprudence. Given, given the great depth importance of establishing these pronunciation units, within which vowel in the following we could try to identify the remaining elephants, but then the text would become too long. It's, it's an objective very important uh, for the future research to, uh, to make what Christian did, uh, this description of, of elementa. So, uh, I return to the barbaris and I, I try to, to structure it, uh, the, the main traits, the main features, characteristic of the barbaris by Pompeius. Pompeius is a very interesting uh, Roman grammarian, uh, which uh, uh, he, who is very clearly in, uh, in his exposition and uh, uh, his brevitas, his uh, concise style, is understandable and very clear with examples. So that uh, uh, phonetic barbaries have uh, uh, three characteristics by accent. So uh, a, a mistake by accent, a mistake by prosody, up and down of the pronunciation. So arsis and desis accent, and uh, it's a, also a problem in the calculating and the knowing of dimension of syllables. The, the dimension of syllables is the first, the first uh, uh, step 
uh, in the language of, of the Latin politics. Uh, because the sense of knowledge in Latin politics uh, I will describe as sense of the phonetics uh, knowledge in Latin. So, uh, Latinitas phonetica is the degree of controlling the phonetic uh, in, a good, in a good way uh, the characteristic of syllables and vowels of elementa and pishamus. Sonoritas, when the Latin text is uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, improved also by stylistic uh, interventions and by uh, uh, also by uh, verifying the world order and there is a so uh, intimate uh, interconnection between the sonoritas and the world order and that, then uh, this interconnection can be uh, uh, analyzed in the liturgical text of the church, for example, for example and the lit liturgy, in, because the need for the prosody, for elevation prosody, is, is very high, and uh, the world order practically uh, realizes this need in the world order combined with a good family. So, so uh, us, Foreticandi, uh, has a set of rules. So, Ars, what is in Latin practical uh, uh, the Ars? Ars is the science. It's not the art of uh, painters and so on. Uh, uh, Ars is a set of rules, a compendium of rules, which, uh, uh, which gives to someone uh, to control uh, a branch of knowledge, or in our case, the phonetic. So Ars grammatica, Ars phonetica, Ars grammatica, as uh, stylistica uh, are uh, practically the rules for controlling in a very, very clear way, uh, in a sharp way, as the science makes uh, uh, the object of uh, research. So, as Pompeius defines very, very clearly and very effective, I think. So, the Final syllables is a part of us. Penultimate syllables could be understood by us, but only partially, not totally. Uh, the fi fi that final syllables all describe all in a very clear way. Penultimate syllables are partially controlled by us, and uh, we will see a very interesting example of uh, Pompeius that is compendium. What, is, what would be compendium? Compendium is a strategy of controlling the antepenultimate, uh, antepenultima syllable, uh, in order to uh, uh, have the possibility to, uh, uh, to have the time for controlling the knowledge of a syllable, and not for all the words, only for a part of words. So that is compendium. It's a strategy of so compendium. I have uh, here uh, uh, an example: of the syllable of Lynchers and primigenia words and Pompeius. Primigenia words: the demonstration of short a with inducting segus a, saegus a, segus a. Pompeius Commentum in Artem Donati. Here we have an, uh, an hexameter. S uh, so, uh, primigenium is amare. Amor is a, uh, a part of the word amare. All the derivation, amas, part, the present participle amas, conjugated word amor, amaturus, future participles. Uh, and amante, the younger, bears the same length as a short, as a short. So, the uh, example of Pompeius was that this a is brevis because it's part of dactyls sae hus a. This is the first dactyl. Sae hus a morto hu it natorum sanguine matre. 
să aibă, să am ordo cu it, natorum, sanguine, matre. So, uh, that was, uh, for the Roman Gavinians, was very important to, after the rule, to, co to come with the example, you know, to demonstrate the rule and uh, uh, its, its uh, practices. I have some uh, also other contributions for uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a long way uh, in a I must control also the time. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, say something about the Ash Ashot final. Ashot final in the nominal case in a, in a in a first uh, situation final vowel a. Uh, when it allows for the final syllable in the nominative case. A singular in the following morphologic uh, uh, cases. The pronoun. The pronoun A A. So in the last position in the syllables, that was a criterion for me uh, to describe the length of the vowel. In the case that the letter, letter A is uh, a low in the syllable, in the final position and a low in the syllable. So we have the very uh, 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 Montanea, for example. Montanea, mon, Montanea. A is, the, uh, is final and short, and in the last position. Derivative adjectives are agentea. Montania, as I said, nomina participia, participiaria in nominative substantia. So, pa, patria, accent on pa, patria, three is short, and the last is also short, short. Derivative adjectives, in genua, in ge, nu, short, in long, ge, short, nu, Short, a, short. So it's in genua. In genua, neutral, ne neutral from in genu, monilia from monile. Uh, another uh, criterion uh, could be when uh, this final a short is preceded by a consonant. B, N, P, N. So, a feminine substantive in nominative case. Nuba, femina, femina, feminine pronounced in nominative case, singular for the pronouns. Ila, ea. Greek accusative singular uh, as delfina, that is short in Latin. The free, uh, the free criterion, the, the first situation is when this short i is preceded by a consonant in a singular case. Latin nouns neutral in nominative singular. So here we have the final syllable. Uh, we have the short a and we have the liquid air. So la lacuna vue de a. So uh, this uh, short a so it's uh, uh, has uh, more characteristics. The third would be so. The third would be so. A short preceded and preceded by consonants in the same uh, uh, in the same final syllable. Latina would check would cervical. Lacunar so it's. Uh, uh, it's a vowel medium, medium. So medium what is in Latin, in the terminology of Latin grammarians, medium is in, the, in that syllable which the vowel is surrounded and uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's surrounded by uh, consonants. So in case of cervical, so it's C and L. So N is short. Cervical, cervicalis. Lacunar. So, consonant, consonant, short R. Lacuna, lacunaris. So, this uh, also a nice sound here. Q, 
conduci comites selam cervical apicas. Arum in nomina, so it's, it's uh, written in Latin. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I'm also uh, writing uh, text in Latin in order to, to make uh, exercises. Exercises are necessary all the time. So uh, this is an example of this. You may read it in Latin. Yes, thank you. Thank you. In ar latina et greca inveniuntur et barbara generis masculini per neuti velonis, que accepta is facium genitivo. Ut hic Caesar Caesaris. So this are uh, short remains are short in the genitive. Caesar, Caesaris, hoc nectar, nectaris. Hic et hec et hoc par cuius paris. Hic aspar cuius asparis. Bostar, bostaris. Se neutra si derivativa sin, producum a inobitris casibus. The neutral nouns, with or, uh, if they are derivatives, are making wrong this are in, uh, in the cases, in the declinated cases. A uh, lupa, hoc lup, lupana, huius lupanaris, that is the changing of the place of the accent for the, for the last one. Lup, lupana lupanaris, alacu, Lacunar lacunaris, alacque lacquear lacquearis, a calce ho calcaris calcaris. So it's a uh, it's a it's a situation of opposition between uh, caesar caesaris et uh, calcar calcaris. So uh, without the morphological rules, it's impossible. Without the morphological description of the cases. It's impossible to retain, to have uh, in the memory uh, practically the phonetic rules. And in this case, the phonetics uh, resorts to, uh, uh, to uh, the sustention, to the help of the grammar and of the phonetics. So, there uh, are sort of collaboration between the two. Some words about the loca finalis. Uh, uh, Cases, uh, it's another cases of uh, uh, demonstration. What uh, uh, what can we uh, demonstrate uh, in a hexameter? The the length of the syllable u, which is long. Unus unus erit medio medii fructu quem vidimus ipsi. So in this case, it's u long. I I read the uh, I have not in the PowerPoint uh, is uh, along. I read it. Along a uh, final uh, can make uh, uh, alone the syllable as a as a in pronoun uh, a is brevis she. And in ablative is is long. Ea. So it's a uh, it's a young. Ea. Ea. It's difficult to pronounce. Yeah. So it, it's uh, the young is uh, it's difficult to to recognize sometimes and to pronounce because of relation of uh, uh, the arsis in the is the. In the, back, in the first syllable of uh, yam, yambus, and uh, in, the, in the case of ablative, in the situation of an ablative form, that is long, that's, that is elongated. But another example, montania is a singular with short a, and in ablative, montanea, so uh, as an Italian pronunciation, montanea. In position. 
patria, we short of patria adjective. Occidua, occidua. So it's a, a, an opposition of dimension between the, the final syllable in the nominative and the final syllable, uh, uh, the final uh, uh, syllable in ablative. Both are in positio, both, both are in, uh, uh, in tesis, but is a difference of, of dimension. Uh, Alonga in a uh, uh, solely is, uh, alone in the, the final, final position is in the other interia. So we have the, the other interia. So it's long. Short, short. We have here, here is Arsis in Terea. And this along is in the upper uh, and makes uh, alone uh, a syllable, a final syllable. Nomina Greca, the Greek nouns, are, which are used uh, in the poetry as tegea, non tege. Uh, I have a, an example from Tebaidos, from Stasius. Non tegea, non ipsa de o vacat al de felis. In this, uh, in this case, non tege, a non. Non tege, a. No. And we have here an dactyl. And here is one D, A long, and this is a demonstration why A is long in the final position. So Another example, teme me ati bi lena comas la risacte suples. So teme, teme me is a dactyl and ati bi, ati bi is also dactyl and a is the, the head of the dactyl, the first position long. The third case for, for a longa, possecuta, that which follow. Uh, a, a certain consonant. In the case of uh, the second uh, the second conjugation, second person in singular, habeo, habeas, habeo, habeas. So, habeo. Habeas. So it's a. Uh, this is in Arsis, and then we have this circumflex on Ha. Habeas. So it's followed by a consonant in the same syllable. When the possible, uh, another example of the other situation, a characteristic, when this long R in the, in the last position, in the last position, is enclosed in the same syllable by a consonant and also another consonant, by two consonants, in the case of valitas. So this long A is enclosed by F, by T, F, and S. So it's long. Uh, and preserves also in genitive. 
vanitas vanitatis. But change is the place of accent. Here is the, on the first position, vanitas vanitatis, in case of vanitatis. Vanitas and the, uh, in the nominative is on the, on the first syllable, vanitas, vanitatis, on the penultimate position. Um, these ideas were uh, are useful for me, uh, in my opinion, uh, in my position, in order to. to to could describe the morphologically and also from the physical standpoint, from the, st the sound standpoint, this position of the final uh, syllables. Of A. Uh, are not sure, are not uh, easy to control them. And we have morphological rules and we have a good linguistic description, it's also almost impossible. Uh, so uh, I will say something about uh, penultimate uh, R. Uh, the dimensions of uh, of this research is uh, not sure, uh, but we will. Uh, I will try to summarize to sum up part of my research in this respect. In the case of Cesar, Cesar is. We have a short R in the penultimate position. Of course, for some uh, personal names, A penultimate short in a Greek uh, nouns of the second declension. Cypriacus. So we have Cypriacus. In, in this case, is short. And the accent would be then, after the rules of accent, on the antepenultimate. So, Cypriacus. We have a, a long uh, uh, A, a uh, penultima a latina in the case of uh, infinitive conjugations, a form of infinitive for present, for amo. Uh, that is uh, uh, in the imperative form is ama. Ama is that in imperative form long in the last position, and in the infinitive form present amare. That is circumflex and long. For another example, comeo, comea, comeo, comea, comea. Lanio, lania, laniare. So it's uh, it's useful from medical certain point of view to, to know that the, the the last R is imperative for the first conjugation uh, because it's very very important the, the dimension of microna uh, for a good understanding of Latin words. There are also uh, uh, a long uh, situation for the penultimate uh, position for a longa for a long in the imperatives with normative uh, usage. So amato, amato. That is uh, as an as an uh, 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 for in, in, as a uh, imperative with social value in Latin language with for to, amato. So, a uh, few words about uh, uh, the dimension of the A. A is a, a special case in the Latin language. Uh, Litera A is difficult to pronounce uh, uh, because some grammarians have said that the litera A longa is very near to the litera A to the E. Uh, some, some linguists or, or 
or giving or our solution another. Our solution is very difficult to pronounce A as E, as A, as the diphthong A. And uh, uh, the researching or is going to have, uh, perhaps uh, a solution would be, sure is that the short A is as in Romanian lang Romanic languages, it's uh, uh, more faster to pronounce it, and uh, this A longa is very difficult to be pronounced, but uh, we must know the situation in, what, in which uh, A longa could uh, occur. So, uh, could occur on the last position for uh, uh, in case of uh, ds dieru on the uh, penultimate position, so it's the eru ds dieru. Also, the nominative ds deserves uh, the position of longa of long. The, uh, So in the, in the penultimate position for the genitives, uh, uh, a long a longa is very uh, uh, important to uh, is long also and is certain place. So I I would also add something about uh, uh, about the relation between. Uh, the word order and uh, uh, and the families. This relation in, uh, in the in the last time I I uh, researched uh, uh, the poetry uh, for few, uh, from funeral funeral descriptions uh, from Corpus Inscriptorum uh, Latinum. Uh, and I discovered that in those uh, description, in those poetries, the phonetic plays a major role. And uh, uh, this part of poetry in the funeral, uh, funeral descriptions could be used for uh, linguistics in order to, uh, to, to, reflect on, to reflect on the diverse quality of Walls, uh, for, for example, long A, short A, long E, short E. But uh, not to forget before, in order to, uh, to, to, to say something about the um, elementa of, uh, the, of the vowel E, which I uh, wrote here. So uh, I, I made a separate research uh, for. Uh, this uh, variants of uh, wrong E in the branch of Latin language. That is a study of uh, uh, of uh, that is a study of uh, phonetic history. It's not a study of uh, it's not a canonical solution. It's very difficult to have one. But before we will have a bunch of uh, linguistic defined solution for this uh, element of, of litera E in Latin, uh, we must know what the Roman Grammarians have written about this. And uh, uh, the Roman Grammarians which, uh, who uh, wrote about this uh, uh, was Consentius, Pompeius, uh, at, uh, uh, Consentius, Pompeius, Christianus uh, has written about a certain uh, uh, phonema which is good, uh, pronounced by the French in the French language, uh, some of this has said that U from the, uh, from the second French language uh, comes from German, but uh, it looks like that is not true. Uh, this uh, uh, element, this, uh, this elementum uh, U, uh, existed also in Latin. So, uh, we shall uh, begin with the begin. So, I brevis. I brevis is uh, uh, is exists in the case of homine, which is the penultimate position. Homine, letter two. So it's short, short, short. Accent 
here. Homine is in a, here is Positio, Thesis. Here is Arsis, Opis in Arsis. Homine is in brevis, in a penultimate position. Ubri in a, about uh, this view, uh, Christianus uh, writes clearly about the existence of this elemental in, uh, in the pronunciation of in this uh, video. That is a uh, difficult E to be pronounced in Latin language, but it existed. So, in case, uh, for example, of video, it's short, short, round, but in case of the preteritum, in case of uh, uh, preteritum, is, that is elongated in V. VD. So, it's VD. It's not U. That is E. Video, VD. Uh, another uh, situation in which uh, uh, we find out uh, this Ibrevis is medium, so it's in case of Optimus. Uh, this E can also be E or U, Optimus. Some, uh, uh, some forms are in the, uh, in the vernacular form where U, Optimus. But U short. Uh, the, uh, this medium of E can be also U, can be also E. That is, that is uh, uh, this sense of medium. And uh, we have also an example of Ilonga. We have two uh, uh, main variants. So we spin this E longa in the last position for uh, some nomina, for some nouns. So viri, viri, viri. That is long and very uh, with substance, with, with some star substance. So viri, viri is possible to be pronounced. Uh, in the case of, also in this, in the case of uh, preterital forms for the verbs of the second conjugation in, uh, uh, in preteritum, in finalis, habu i, it, uh, it uh, is as a uh, long i uh, with circumflex, thick, with circumflex uh, pronunciation. And uh, has a big substance, Habui. And there are also people uh, in some position uh, in a circumflex uh, words. So uh, we will, I will sum up uh, my presentations. Uh, as I said, uh, for the final uh, uh, presentation, uh, for the final position of my presentation, uh, is to be uh, retained in memory that uh, exists a, a very interesting and intimate uh, interlinkage, interconnection between the world order and the prosody. So, the prosody, the need of the prosody, uh, depends on the needs of the text. The needs of the text, the social need or personal need of the text uh, requires a certain prosody. The prosody requires the collaboration and work order to attain it, to obtain it. So, thank you very much for, uh, for, for following me.
Molte grazie a tutti. Molte grazie a tutti. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Topan for his uh, very interesting journey through Latin matrix uh, phonetics and syntax. And um, if there are questions, could you please check if there are questions uh, online? Um, is there anybody who has uh, here in the audience a question? Yes, yes, please, Nicolas. Um, yes, so now, so generally speaking, this is a, it, it can be a, a topic for specialists, you know, for this way, but it's something that has had to continue for 2,000 years for us to pretend to speak Latin today. So I was wondering what, like, what continuities have you seen scholars or grammarians trying to what do you those continuities yes. have you seen in scholars and grammarians since say first century second century renaissance and today trying to address mm -hmm. quite trying to figure out how, how people you know, how you should properly speak up uh, thank you for your observation and for your question uh, after my experience uh, in reading the linguistic contributions um, uh, i saw that some uh, uh, mentions uh, some nuances uh, pre present in the Latin variants are not uh, 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 were not used for some linguists. So uh, now we are trying to reconstruct, put together all the contribution of the Roman variants of the Latin variants mm -hmm. because of this uh, ready task. I, as I said uh, at the commencement of my presentation of my lecture. Uh, uh, this project has uh, made that some uh, nuances were put in the part. So, uh, but uh, the, the good shape, the good variant of things is that some other variants have contributed with their contributions, and putting together, we can we can hope to uh, better uh, control of Elementa. For example, Elementa. I, I, I am eager to write now to find out this element. Of Christians, which Christians have not written. What is possible to have? We must find out uh, uh, 10 elementa for each other. Christians has written only about half, but 10 elementa for A, 10 elementa for B, 10 elementa for O, 10 elementa for E. So it's uh, uh, the help of in informatics and the corpuses has assured this possibility to make comparison, to compare between Latin uh, 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 which uh, wrote, uh, what wrote Christians, what not wrote, wrote Christians, what wrote uh, Pompeius, what not wrote Pompeius, and Pompeius, and so on. I have, uh, personally, as I can say, I have the, the passions to compare. Uh, uh, the writings of the Roman Americans. Uh, Thank you. I have a question. Okay. Um, what have you seen the, the last part of this uh, document specifically entry with the, the better platform? So how are how are orators and poets deliberately messing with the language with the changing of accents? Are they like is it like you see in say uh, modern literature or 1800s, 1900s literature, where you're kind of pretending to adopt like a regional dialect accent within like a story, or are they like mocking the foreigners, for instance, if like an order is making a speech against someone and adopts some of their barbarisms to mock them? Like, what, what do you do with Metaclasmus? Like, what's that look like? Metaclasmus, it's, it's a barbarism which is used uh, for uh, good writers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you must be a good poet and a good writer to use batteries uh, in the form of metacosmos. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, uh, and uh, one mustn't demonstrate that it's possible only in this way to, to write down the books or to write down a, 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 a prosa piece. So uh, metacosmos uh, without this possibility of demonstrating its necessity. It's not metaplasmos, but it's a vice, it's a vision. 
So Metaplasm is it's, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to construct it mm -hmm. as a grammatic tool, as a, as a, as a poet uh, strategy. But for what? Many cases of meta Metacosmos. Also for virtue, so Italian. So uh, Italia. So E is short. And it's a uh, uh, Metaplasmos for, uh, for virtue. So E Italia. It's instead of short E, Virgil has uh, uh, written long, which is a meta, uh, that is a barbarism. Because Italia, Italia, is, uh, has three syllables and all are short. So accent is on E, Italia. Uh, with, each, uh, with short E, and the metaplasmus is uh, uh, of dimension of time. So, uh, uh, Virgil made from E short a long, uh, from a long beginning. And, and what was the accomplishment of that? Just showing, like, it was in the DNA before Roman really found it, so it's Italy is still pronounced in a barbaric way because. No, uh, he didn't what's, what's it was written in, in, the, in the poetry, in a barbaric way. That, but it's in metaplasmus, it's not a barbaric. Right. So, but, 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 like, for what purpose is he important? Uh, to. To attract attention, uh, uh, so uh, uh, the literary strategy was very diversified. Was very diversified, and uh, for example, the first tool of of, of uh, comprehending the a piece of a poetic text is to reconstruct it in a prose way. We want to reconstruct it in a prose in a prose way. You, you, it's impossible to understand the way they call it. So, uh, 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 hyperbacking was also uh, a strategy for uh, deconstructing the text, and uh, the fear of the poetry should re reconstruct in his mind the normal uh, world order. Mm. So, and not uh, the marked world order, but uh, without the uh, uh, mark or order is not impossible, it's not possible to have uh, uh, an artistic way of the poetry. Uh, it's impossible to attract attention for, uh, for here, for the here. Yeah, thank you. Is there any other question? Yeah, yeah. Not a, to make two, two points. Uh, uh, this the remark about the long A tending towards the B, uh, it's something you can hear in the living language in Arabic, in the most of words of long A. It tends, except when there are certain consonants in the next bit, in which case it tends towards the, towards the long O. And curiously, the same Arabic words which tend towards the B, uh, in Arabic, when they use this loan words in Persian, they actually tend towards the O. So it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenon that occurs in the But the second point is the following. Uh, where he distinguishes, uh, where he distinguishes between the, the sh short or long vowel, whether it's preceded by H or not, whether it's aspirated or not, uh, I would think in Latin it's not a difference of pronunciation because the aspiration is actually shown with a letter. Uh, this is a distinction which you need in Greek. So I wonder if Christian is here simply taking over some discussion from a Greek grammarian, which is actually not relevant in Latin. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and in general, I wonder to what extent he is uh, Frisky and Frisky and he is using uh, some such discussions in Greek, which he is adapting to Latin, because yes, because in Greek this would make sense to make this distinction if you're explaining the pronunciation of a word, but in Latin it's not needed. Uh, so uh, I try to respond for for the first uh, question. For Elonga, uh, 
Yes, in some variants uh, have written that there are a uh, between A lambda and A bridges. Mm -hmm. It's a difference of potestas and quality, qualitas. So a difference of pronunciation, a uh, big difference of pronunciation. And this big difference of pronunciation or also for the elemental of E. E, A, and E are difficult to write. O is not so difficult because it's also a, a, a place for pronunciation O. Cum labis, o short, o, o longa with the power, o son tragicum dabi, we will give a, a, a tragic sound. So, uh, a, this a longa is near to e, uh, but not to be, uh, not to be uh, compared with uh, diphthong a, but diphthong a disappeared. In Latin and was uh, replaced by from E. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, <coughs> but uh, some some French uh, uh, linguists have uh, given another uh, uh, variant of a longa as a a a. But but I, I I'm not I'm not convinced about this. Uh, it's very also difficult to to pronounce a longa as a a. But uh, perhaps the uh, Roman languages could have to identify this along. For the second uh, uh, question, uh, uh, it is true that Michelus uh, was uh, an admirer of uh, uh, Greek grammatics and uh, have, has adopted uh, various strategies of the Spanish language. Uh, especially Apollonius Discorus was the, uh, the mother for him. But uh, Christian, uh, Christianus was very pragmatic. He wanted to indicate only in non cooperation with Greek, with the needs for exploration Greek. He was only interested to demonstrate that there are 10 elementa for each of So for uh, 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 between H and R, it's a difference of element of the pronunciation in the syllable. Syllable was very important for Roman variants. Syllables was the reality of pronunciation and not the vowels. Vowels uh, only in some syllables were only used. And uh, uh, some grammarians are saying that syllable for uh, a syllable where is formed only by a vowel is an abusive, it's not a good uh, sentence. Practically in Greek, uh, it's a collaboration between uh, more letters to form a syllable. That is the, the Greek meaning. That is my, my position. That uh, 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 Prashant was interested in. Do you think that he is, uh, he is um, influenced by pre previous discussions by Greek variants? It's possible. I haven't. I haven't said so. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I cannot respond to your mm -hmm. But uh, it is it is true that the institutions grammatice there are many 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 uh, Greek examples because Christianus had control uh, totally also the Greek language. Mm -hmm. He lived in Thessaloniki uh, in, uh, in 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 his best uh, time. He was professor teacher at the University of Osadiopo. Uh, and uh, he controlled totally the Greek uh, language. Thank you so much. I will invite everyone now to have uh, a snack, to have a bag of kibot, and thank you. <laughs> Thank you.